Hello everyone, I'm Vincent Racaniello and this is Virus Watch for April 29th, 2016. This is the first in what will be a series of short videos exploring the amazing world of viruses. And since Zika virus is on everyone's mind these days, we'll probably be talking about that for quite some time. Before 2015, hardly anybody worked on Zika virus, but that's all changed now. And the papers come out weekly. And what I'd like to do is go through some of those with you every week. Today's story number one is a study out of Brazil where they have found that Zika virus is in Brazilian monkeys. The authors have used polymerase chain reaction or PCR to look for virus, Zika virus nucleic acids in saliva in serum. And they looked at 15 marmosets and nine capuchin monkeys, and they found four of the 15 marmosets had Zika virus RNA, and three of the nine capuchin monkeys as well. Now, these animals were from diverse parts of Seattle State, which is where Zika virus is currently circulating. When they sequenced the PCR product, they found that it was 100% identical to the currently circulating Zika virus strain uh, in Brazil. Now, these animals were all free-ranging. The marmosets were free-ranging, but they had contact with people. And the capuchins were pets, so they also had contact with people. Now, if you remember, Zika virus was originally isolated in Uganda in 1947, and we believe that in Africa, the reservoir of the virus is a variety of monkeys. Uh, and this includes uh, rhesus, macaques, grivets, red-tailed monkeys, many other kinds of monkeys. We think that Zika transmits in a cycle uh, among monkeys and causes periodic outbreaks of disease, which we call epizootics. And then this is transmitted by mosquitoes from monkey to monkey. And then it can go from monkey to human by mosquito as well. And as we found out uh, later on in the outbreak on Yap Island, where there are no monkeys, the virus can go from human to human. So if these findings are confirmed in other parts of Brazil, it means that Zika virus is spreading through New World monkeys there, and that will establish a new reservoir of infection, not only to cause infection among monkeys, but to transmit the virus to humans as well. So there will be human-human and monkey-human cycles of infection uh, in Brazil. So that is not good news, but it is not unexpected. Of course, we didn't know if New World monkeys would be infected by Zika virus, uh, but apparently they are. Our second story comes out of Florida Gulf Coast University. And the bad news is that antibodies to dengue virus can enhance infection of cells with Zika virus. Now, Zika virus and dengue virus are both members of the flavivirus family. They're highly related to one another. Dengue virus is a well-known, globally established mosquito-borne pathogen of humans. There are four different serotypes. When you get infected with one of the serotypes of dengue virus, you typically recover after a period, you have immunity to the virus, but then when you get infected with a second serotype, the antibodies that are produced against the first serotype will bind the new dengue virus, but they will not block its infection. Rather, they help the virus to get into cells that they normally would not infect. The result is more virus production and more serious disease upon second infections. So the authors of this study wanted to find out if a similar event happens, that is, the antibodies to dengue viruses make Zika virus infection more efficient. And so they took two different human monoclonal antibodies. These are antibodies isolated from people who had recovered from dengue, and these antibodies are directed against dengue virus. These antibodies do not block Zika virus infection of cells. But when they add these antibodies against dengue to Zika viruses and then infect cells in culture with what we call FC receptors, the virus can get into those cells and replicate very efficiently. Now, FC receptors are on the surface of certain kinds of cells and they bind the FC portion of antibodies. So if you can imagine, Zika virus is bound to the dengue virus antibody. The antibody in turn is bound to a cell surface receptor. It's taken up into a cell and it can replicate. The authors found that in cultured cells with two monoclonal antibodies. They also looked at sera from people who had recovered from dengue and found a similar effect. Now, if this is confirmed in animal models 
and in people, it's very serious because dengue is very extensive and many people uh, in places that are getting infected with Zika also have been infected with dengue virus. So they're going to have antibodies to the virus and this could make Zika virus disease more severe. In fact, many people think that perhaps the more recent severe manifestations of Zika virus infection could be a consequence of having antibodies to dengue virus. And those severe consequences include, of course, microcephaly and Guillain-Barre syndrome. So much more work needs to be done in this front, but these initial in, uh, results are a bit frightening. Now, the last point on this story very recently, a dengue virus vaccine has been licensed in Brazil, Mexico, and the Philippines. And when you immunize people with this vaccine, they're going to get antibodies to dengue virus. The reason we're using this vaccine is because dengue is a serious infection and there are potentially billions of people at risk for infection. But what happens if those antibodies make Zika disease more severe? So clearly we need to look at this in very great detail. Last story comes out of Johns Hopkins University where investigators have used stem cells. These are cells in the body that can give rise to any other cell. They're called pluripotent stem cells. They can give rise to a lung, a liver, a brain cell, and they've used them to make tiny models of the brain. And these are called brain organoids. You can take a stem cell and differentiate into these organoids. They have multiple layers, so they resemble miniature versions of the brain. And they also go through a series of developments that mimic what goes on during development of a fetal brain. So what they have done is to make these organoids from different parts of the brain, and they have used those from the forebrain to ask what happens if you infect them with Zika virus. Because remember, in microcephaly, we think the virus gets into the developing fetus and infects the brain and destroys cells and causes it to be smaller than it should be. What they found is, the virus replicates specifically in neuron progenitors, the cells that give rise to neurons in the brain. And it causes death of those cells, and there are fewer cells, and as a result, the cell layer is reduced in size. So their idea is that this is mimicking what happens in the fetus, the virus is getting in, early in development perhaps, infecting the precursors to neurons. So then you have fewer precursors, fewer neurons, a smaller brain, and that's part of microcephaly. That's Virus Watch for April 29th, 2016. If you want more in-depth discussion of these stories and many others, check out This Week in Virology at microbe.tv slash twiv. I'm Vincent Racaniello. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.